All right, folks, here we go. Um, it's about time for our Pong game uh, to get legit. So Pong becomes difficult only when the ball can move in two dimensions. That is, it can bounce all over the screen, not just in a line. Because let's face it, uh, you put your mouse you know, on the line, and there it is. It's a, it's a pretty boring game. So here's where we're at right now. Uh, we're running this Pong game, and it bounces off the screen. And we can bounce it, and it'll hit or we can miss it and it goes off the screen and our game is over okay or we can cheat and bring it back which we discovered last time we still haven't fixed that um, we can fix that really quickly so let's uh, you know cheat the game here uh, let's add a very very final uh, if and let's say uh, if the ball x is ever greater than the width of the screen so in other words if it ever goes off the screen we're going to kill the program uh, and to do that, we use the function exit. And so we'll actually kill the program. So this kills the program if we lose. Let's go ahead and run it. And now we can see, oh, oh I'm good at Pong. Look at that. Look how great I am at Pong. Oh, I'm getting cocky. Now I'm going to go eat a sandwich. And then, up, oh, I lost the game. And that's what you get for eating sandwiches instead of paying attention to your bouncing red ball. Um, so, let's figure out how to make it bounce in 2D. Well, to get that going, uh, we have to kind of plan the project out. Well, we're going to have to make it so that when it bounces off the paddle, it bounces off at an angle. So we're going to have to do a little bit of trigonometry, not very much. Nothing beyond geometry class, so don't get worried. Uh, but we're going to have to choose that angle and figure out how fast it's moving in the x direction and how fast it's moving in the y direction. Um, and so we're going to start adding variables for all of those things. For instance, uh, let's create a float called ball speed y. Yep, you guessed it. And we're going to set that equal to zero to start off. Why are we doing that? Well, because we already have the ball moving to the right at three pixels every frame uh, shift. And we want to keep it, you know, keep it easy on the person for their first bounce. But when it bounces off the paddle, let's have it bounce off at a random angle. So we're going to come down here and we'll get inside of that if statement where we have the paddle bounce. So this is the uh, the paddle bounce right here. Does it hit the paddle? In fact, we're going to move this comment. We're going to cut it out and we're going to put it right here. Okay, so does it hit the paddle? So now we're inside of here and we can say, okay, well we've hit the paddle and we basically just send it backwards, but that's not quite good enough. Uh, let's make this program a little bit more complicated. Um, let's create uh, an angle. Okay, and we'll have that angle be an integer, and we'll call it angle. Um, why am I declaring this variable right here? Uh, because I don't really care. I'm not going to use it anywhere else. So if I declare it out here, I can use it wherever I want. But if I declare it in here, it becomes owned by this draw function, um, by draw. And basically, uh, it becomes a part of just this function because we don't really need to know what the angle is going to be because it's going to change all the time. So let's have the angle uh, bounce off at some random angle. In fact, we can type random. And let's say it's going to bounce off between some angle uh, between 0, let's say, I don't know, just for giggles, let's say between negative 60 and 60. So we're going to pick a random number, and that's going to be our angle. So this spits out an angle in degrees. Okay, and now we need to calculate how fast will it go. Well, if it spits out an angle in degrees, what that's going to look like, if I pull up some paint here, what that's going to look like is it's going to be moving at the same speed no matter what. So if I draw a picture here of it, if I draw my, my angle, if my ball shoots this way at 3, Okay, it's going to be this long, so this will be negative 3. This will be the picture negative 3. And you're going to laugh at me drawing with the, the paintbrush here, but you know what? I don't care. So here it is moving at negative 3. And you can see here that what that really is is just an arrow pointing backwards that's 3 long. Well, what if it bounces this way? Okay. Oh, I should switch to the line. Sorry. Uh, what if it bounces this way? Well, it's exactly the same length as this triangle, or as this uh, arrow, but now it's down and over. And in fact, we can see here that it, we can break it up. This arrow is actually moving down and to the left. 
So we have to break it up and find out how much of it is going this way and how much of it is going that way. And you can see here that these are at 90 degrees. So these are what we can call uh, ball speed x and ball speed y. So here this will be ball speed x and this will be ball speed y. And to do that you can see we've created a bunch of triangles. Uh, so we can do a bunch of trig. Um, you can come and talk to me if you're not comfortable with the trigonometry here. But this one is going to be the cosine leg and this one's going to be the sine leg. Uh, if that's beyond you, go ahead and come in and we can work through some cosine and sine problems together. Uh, but let's do that on here. So we're going to take our angle. Uh, where did we go here? We're going to take our random angle in degrees and we're going to calculate a new ball speed. Uh, instead of being a ball speed x, we're going to have it be 3, which was the original length of the arrow times cosine of angle. So just like you did in geometry. And for ball speed y, we're going to say 3 times sine of our angle. Okay? So what we've done here is calculated a new angle, and then now we're calculating the speed in the x direction and the y direction using our triangle that we saw over here in paint. Okay, and the 3 comes from the fact that the black arrow is always 3 units long, no matter which way you bend it. It only can be negative 3 if it points directly left or directly right or directly up or directly down. So uh, let's see what happens. Well, you can see here that this, isn't, this just isn't going to quite work right anymore. We're going to have to seriously change a lot of things. This if statement right here is if the ball hits the left edge of the screen. Okay, so we're going to start breaking these up here. We're going to start organizing our code. So this is if the ball hits the left side of the screen. And now we don't necessarily want to make it go to 3 anymore because we don't necessarily know what it's going to go. We want ball speed x to be equal to negative ball speed x, which is just the idea of turning around the ball. So whichever way it's going, we're just going to take that number, maybe it's negative, and flip its sign and make it positive. Well, maybe it's positive. Well, then in this case, this makes it negative. Okay. Now, what if the ball, if the ball hits the top edge? Well, what do we need to do? Well, if ball y is less than zero, remember the top of the screen is considered zero, then we need to take ball speed y and make it equal to negative ball speed y. So we're just turning the ball around in the right direction. So if it hits the top of the screen, it continues moving left and right, because this does nothing, but it turns it around in the y direction. Okay, so what if it hits the bottom? If the ball hits the bottom edge, what happens? Well, how do we figure that out? Well, if ball y is greater than what? Well, the height of the screen, then we need to say ball speed, whoops, I misspelled speed. Thanks for letting me know, guys. ball speed y equals negative ball speed y. And remember, this is kind of the exact same code here that we're doing for each thing. Um, and you're probably thinking to yourself, couldn't you just put this up here? Well, yeah, we can mess around with that. Um, I just want to make sure it's clear uh, what we're doing. So now we hit the paddle, we can hit the left edge, we can hit the top, we can hit the bottom. But it's still not going to quite work because we're still just updating the position of the ball in the x direction. So we need to copy this line of code and say ball speed y plus equals, I'm sorry, ball y equals ball speed plus y. So we're adding it to both of them. Sorry, that was more complicated to say than it really is in code. Okay, so let's see what happens. Probably not going to work the first time, but let's just see what we get. Okay. Oh, we're missing something. Yep, we're missing a semicolon. That's how you end the line. Oh, it's going to tell us cannot convert from float to an int. Uh, that means that this is producing, this function is producing a decimal number, and we're trying to store it in an integer. So here's the computer saying, hey, I'm not going to have room, enough room. So just call it a float uh, just for now. Okay, ooh, it looks like our program's going to run. And let's see if we can get a bounce here. Boom, and it bounced off randomly. Hit the screen, y velocity turned around. Hit the edge, x velocity, y velocity turns. If we hit it with the dude, boom. Boom. And you see it's coming off at a random angle from our paddle. There we go. 
hitting the edges. And notice each edge is only flipping one of the different components of the speed. And so now we get the ball moving around. But the ball is always moving at the exact same speed. It's just grabbing uh, different amounts of it in the x and y direction. It's still only covering three pixels per second. It's just kind of at a diagonal sometimes. Uh, and that's our game of Pong. Uh, you can totally make this way better. Other project ideas, you know, add a second paddle on the other side of the screen over here that someone else can control with the keys. So you can actually play a game of Pong. Oh, I lost. Uh, you can make the game much faster. You can make it so the ball speeds up. You can make it so you could smoosh the paddle into the ball to give it the speed of the, of the paddle. You could do anything. Um, in our next video, I'm going to show you how to clean this code up because uh, this code is really, really, really ugly. Um, I'm going to show you how to make an object out of the ball so that you can have a whole bunch of balls on the screen. Okay, thanks guys. We'll talk to you later.